In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. You give us for your love, your love and your mercy for being so good with us. We thank you for your word. We ask you, you may give us your Holy Spirit so that we may today hear your word and be nourished by this uh, message of hope and, and, and of uh, invitation that you are making for us, you are doing for us. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to no one who is evil. When someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. You have heard that was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father, for he makes his sun rise on the bad and on the good, and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brotherly, your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, brothers and sisters, this word is kind of like uh, very tough. And in fact, it's a continuation of all uh, the other last three, three, three weeks that we have had in the past, uh, these three Sundays, that it is part of the Sermon of the Mount. You know all what it is already. The Sermon of the Mount is kind of like um, the project that God has for all of us. Uh, his children and the invitation that he has for all of us so that we may be happy because at the end doing what God wants from us doing uh, his will keeping his word and putting it into practice with his help and his grace we are happy um, this invitation of being holy as uh, he is holy um, it is exactly uh, the mission that all of us we have it's kind of like a call within a call um, this great call is holiness, and the other call within this call is in marriage or in lay life, in laity, uh, or as a priest, so religious, to be uh, like Christ, to be just like Jesus Christ uh, wants us to be, as He thought us to be, because He created us not for this world; He created us for heaven. He created us uh, to share with him eternity, eternity. And we can do this uh, as, as we live in, in, in this world. We can do this with uh, hope and understanding uh, of what is his will. Uh, understanding because we, in doing so, we are um, doing uh, his will and uh, in acting upon this invitation to do his will, it is the secret of our happiness. In fact, is the more we act as he wants us to act, uh, the more happier we are, the happier we are. The problem is that how difficult it is uh, to live and love ourselves, how difficult it is to love our neighbor, and more difficult or impossible it is to love our enemies. So why is it that Jesus is asking this of us? And for sure, uh, brothers and sisters, this, this is not a, a word that is meant to discourage us or a word that is meant to tell us how impossible it is for us to fulfill the law. Uh, because we all know this. We know that this is impossible. For us, we are incapable of fulfilling the will of God on our own. That's why we pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's why we, we, we unite ourselves with Jesus who said, let your will be done. Or to the Virgin Mary, here is a handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done in me according to your word. 
and she as Jesus and uh, both they uh, they went down under uh, the the if you wish the protection of God the help of the Holy Spirit and through the power of the Holy Spirit they were able to to accomplish the father's will and so we uh, as well through the experience of God's love for us through experiencing God's mercy through experiencing the holiness of God we can be holy at the end of the gospel it says be perfect as I'm perfect but there's another translation which I like even better if you go to the Bible the Jerusalem Bible it says do not put limits on love as God doesn't put limits on his love and it is true it is only because he loves me and his and and I have tasted this love then I can love others. I cannot give what I don't have. I can give only what I have. Now the question and the, and the, and the, and the difficult question it is this: Do you have this love? Do I have this love? Because if I don't have this love, it's a shame. Because God wants me to have this love. In, in fact, everything that He is trying to do, everything that He is doing, is to Share with me this love to help me to have this love in myself so that I can give it to my family, to the people that are, that are around me. It is because he is he's investing on this upon prayer, upon intercession, upon grace, upon grace, the sacraments, the Eucharist every Sunday or every day if you can. The reading of the scriptures. The word of God who is a lamp for our steps and a light for, a pa for our path. Those are ways, means where his grace come upon me to help me to be holy. The problem is that we, within the holiness, uh, to be able to love our enemies. Uh, it's not a good news. Eh? As if be holy is to be sad. As if to be holy is not to enjoy life. As to be holy means to suffer. I mean, for sure, there is suffering. For sure, there is struggles. There are trials. I mean, Jesus Christ, the you know, he didn't go, uh, you know, he didn't come down from earth. He became uh, to earth. Sorry, he didn't. Be, he didn't become a human to 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 have a fantastic time on earth in the sense uh, forever i mean he did for the first 33 years i mean after persecution in egypt uh, but then you know we see, we read the scripture he was partying he was drinking with his disciples he was in weddings he was in banquets i mean he had life he was enjoying life only in everything for that purpose of heaven he was doing this all all of it for the mission he never, he never stopped looking at his father. That's why he will, he will go out and he will talk to his father. He will go out of the village in secret during the night. Normally during the night, there is not nothing to nobody to work, to bother you. There is no crowd. There is no, uh, there is no noise. Why? Because he needed to have this contact with his father. This receive the graces that he needed in order to fulfill his mission. So you and I. We need these graces to fulfill our mission. And our mission, brothers and sisters, is to love. To love without limits, without putting any limits to this. We cannot condition love. God doesn't condition our, His love for us. He doesn't condition us. He loves us as we are. And that's the good news. And because He loves us as we are, we can love the other. And yes, it doesn't mean that we cannot say the truth to the others or uh, even to denounce uh, injustices. We can. And uh, that's not a sin. But after that, we love. Eh? We love. We love. We need to love. We need to love because the other one who is our enemies, the other one who doesn't know God, and that's why he's acting the way he's acting. And I'm talking about crimes here. I'm talking about just a simple everyday situation, but even crimes. You know, those people, eh, all of us who are eh, who are guilty eh, of committing sins against the other. You know, our thoughts, eh, our envies our judgments, all of us, yeah, we are all, all poor people. We are all people who are uh, wounded 
And all of us, we need mercy because we are all sinners. We need mercy. We need God's grace. We need the sacraments. We need the the, the prayers of others and our own. We need we need we need Jesus to intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. We need we need the saints. We need the Virgin Mary to help us. So we can love because we are loved. We can give to others what we receive. So let us ask today the Lord to help us to receive this love, so that we can give freely what we have received freely. It is not an effort. It is not an effort. It shouldn't be an effort or an impossible effort anyways. It should be a good effort. The effort, for example, of a mother to feed her son, of a father providing for the family, eh, of, a, of a mother eh, forgiving the sons. Yes, it's a small effort, but it's an effort that brings life. Eh? Or the effort of an athlete to be in shape in order to perform properly as he is in, a, in, in the match. So there is an effort which is natural, good, and healthy. So that's that's the type of effort that God wants from us. It's not an effort which is moralistic, which destroys us, puts us down. It's not a it's not a an effort that uh, um, that discourages us, but uh, it is an invitation to put into practice freely what we have received freely. So give what you have received, and if you have not received this love. I wish for you and for me, brothers and sisters, that we may receive this love, that we may be convinced of this love of God, which is without limits. God bless you. Enjoy this uh, this this Sunday uh, with your family or wherever you are, knowing that God has loved you first. And because of this, you can love uh, the rest. You can put in practice what you have received. God bless you. Peace be with you.